It's 2023 and that means there is no more room left for cakey makeup. I've been there, you've been there. Now I could be wrong, but I don't remember the last time I wanted my face to feel heavy with my foundation and cracky. Worse than that to actually look like it's separating. And if you do, girl, do your thing. It's a free country. Now let me show you what I do. If you learn one thing from me, and if you've been staying updated with all of my recent videos, the most important thing ever is skin prep. It is very difficult to achieve the result that you want if your skin is not prepped to the gods. And yes, I'm very happy with my skin where it is today, but that doesn't mean that I haven't gone through years of acne, close comedones, pretty much all the above, and I would still give the same exact advice that I'm gonna give you today. So I made sure my face is washed and clean. I like to use the La Roche-Posay Hydrating Cleanser. It's really nice because it doesn't feel like it's stripping my skin from any moisture. And the next step is exfoliation. It is so important that you are getting some type of exfoliation happening in your skin at least once a week. If you don't do this, there's gonna be remnants of dead skin cells all over the face, which can definitely lead to patchy makeup. Personally, I like to stay away from physical exfoliants, I find that they're just too rough on the skin, so I opt for a chemical exfoliant. I love this one by Paula's Choice. This is a 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. It has salicylic acid and it's recommended for all skin types and it unclogs and shrinks enlarged pores. It smooths and evens out the skin tone. Just make sure if you are applying this in the AM to follow up with SPF. Next, I like to take a very rich moisturizer. This is one of the only products in my makeup kit that I'm gonna say, if you're gonna splurge money on, this is what I recommend. And that is the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. I also love their water cream, but this one just hits different. Now, I will say with this, you do not need a lot. You just need about like a pea size for the entire face. And also with moisturizer, you don't wanna overdo it because have you guys ever put on your foundation and noticed that it's like, peeling off the face that happens when you put too thick of products underneath so a little does go a long way especially with this product and not to mention this is what it does to your skin if you have dry under eyes then i highly recommend a good eye cream i'm going to list a little bit more affordable options below don't kill me but i also love the tatcha serum stick i just like to put a little bit of this underneath the eyes if you're going to buy one of them definitely opt for the moisturizer I wouldn't say this one is as necessary. I feel like maybe Vaseline or a really, really good rich eye cream will do the job as well, but I bought it, so you know, gotta use it. Then I like to take a nice hydrating sunscreen. I like this one by La Roche-Posay. It has 60 SPF. If you have oily skin, I wouldn't recommend this one, even though it says it is good for all skin types because it definitely leaves that skin looking very luminous. And this is my idea of a perfectly prepped face. Now I feel comfortable to move on to my makeup products. I learned something this year that was absolutely mind blowing to me. I realized it when one of my friends was having trouble with her primer and her foundation. She kept getting some separation. It was like peeling all over the face. She kept calling me. She's like, what do I do? I looked into it, did a bunch of research, and this is what I found. Your primers and your foundations can be oil-based, water-based, or silicone-based. You're gonna ideally want to match up whatever primer and foundation you're using so they work in harmony together. If you don't do this, picture putting oil and water together doesn't go so great. So I've been more intentional about the products that I've been using. Today we're gonna go in with a water-based primer. This is especially good for combination skin. I'm gonna go in with the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. The reason why I love this primer is because when you're done putting this on, you can really feel the tackiness on the skin. And the more tacky that your skin feels, you really know that the foundation that you're putting on top is gonna stick much better and last longer. And for foundation today, I'm gonna mix these two shades of the L'Oreal True Match. This is in the shade Neutral Light Medium and Neutral Light. I feel like I'm somewhere in between these. Now, this is obviously a water-based foundation. It has medium coverage, and I just love the way this looks on the skin. Now, I'm mixing those two shades up on the back of my hand, taking a damp sponge, warming that up. Using a sponge is not only good for beginners, but as far as not getting cakey makeup, it's really gonna soak up any excess product so it doesn't feel like you have too much on. Now, a lot of people say that using your hands is the most natural finish that you can get, 
which I agree with as long as you're using tapping motions because actually with your sponge or with your hand, if you're rubbing like this and you're not tapping, you can actually create micro exfoliation in the skin and that's that peely texture and dead skin cells that are being lifted to the surface of the skin. So when you see those little peely things on your face, that's what it is. For concealer, I'm gonna use a nice hydrating concealer. I'm gonna take this one by Giorgio Armani and again, I'm gonna just be putting that on the back of the hand and warming up the product, same with the sponge and just applying that on the areas that I want. So underneath my eyes, and if I have any blemishes on my face, I always say it's much better to go in with a more conservative amount of foundation and then go in and spot conceal with your concealer. Desi Perkins actually has an amazing video on spot concealing that I'm going to link down below. You should definitely go check that out. Taking my Lancome skin tint just to warm up the perimeter of my face. Notice that I'm using all cream products basically on my face. It's funny because I feel like they get a bad rep. I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, that seems harder to use, but it's actually a lot more beginner friendly and less likely to look cakey on the face. When working with powder bronzers, which I haven't done in years, by the way, if not done correctly, it's much likely to look more muddy on the face, especially in person, like when you can just see a harsh line there it's much less likely to happen with cream products, especially when your skin is prepped right, which obviously after watching this video, it will be. Just wiping off the lips and I'm gonna apply some gloss. Next, to really seal all this in, we're gonna set the face. Now this is kind of a hard topic because I'm not telling you that you shouldn't bake. However, in the winter time, if you tend to have drier skin, it definitely will add to the patchiness, you're more likely to get separation with baking. So what I recommend is a nice blurring setting powder. I'm using this one by Charlotte Tilbury and a nice fluffy brush like this and lightly tapping your product in, dusting it off. And again, just using light tapping motions. We're not dragging, just tapping. Sometimes when we overdo it with the setting, it can just lead to a lot of dryness and patchiness. And that is really what we're trying to avoid in this video. This will definitely make your makeup look the most natural also in person. Lastly, I'm gonna grab this Luminous Morphe setting spray and voila. Now, if you try this yourself, the goal is when you're smiling and you're laughing and you can feel the creases in your eyes and your mouth and you know, everywhere, you don't wanna feel it. You wanna feel like you have absolutely nothing on. That's the goal. And that's exactly how I feel right now. I feel nice, I feel hydrated. I feel beautiful, I feel dewy, and yeah, that's it. I feel like those are all the tips that I can give. If you have any additional tips, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you guys for watching, I love you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.